Journey to Pascha, Orthodox Spiritual Reflections on Great Lent, brought to you by the Greek Orthodox Christian Society of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Australia. This podcast discusses some of the messages taken from the Epistle and Gospel readings of the first Sunday of Great Lent, the Sunday of Orthodoxy. These include the reality that all who recognize Christ as Lord will endure hardships and struggles, and the importance of showing the courage of the martyrs in our journey to persevere and overcome our old selves. Someone once described our Orthodox faith as a multifaceted diamond that reflects rays of the truth from all its sides. Each year on the occasion of the Feast of the Sunday of Orthodoxy, it is helpful to look at one of these rays of truth, maybe a father of the church or an aspect of Orthodox worship, maybe a focus on the victory of icons and the struggle against heresy or a deeper understanding of the truths of our faith. Today, however, we will look at a couple of the messages from the Epistle and Gospel reading for the Sunday of Orthodoxy. The Epistle reading teaches us that those who recognize Christ as Lord, as the Messiah, as the one who was expected, as the one that God sent into the world to save mankind, as prophesied in the Old Testament, as taught by the Apostles, as defended by the Fathers, as lived by the ascetics and all the saints, will inevitably suffer in some way and will be called on to witness to their faith and show courage. In the epistle reading we hear about Moses and how he fled the pleasures of Egypt, choosing to be ill-treated with the people of God. And we reflect on the martyrs, ascetics and saints who suffered tortures, mockings, chains and imprisonment, how they were stoned, sawn in two, killed with a sword, going about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. It is true that that Orthodox Christians have suffered more than other Christians from persecutions, politics and wars. Beginning with the age of martyrs in the first 300 years after Christ and then at the hands of the Ottoman Turks for 400 years with the Asia Minor catastrophe in the early 1900s and finally throughout the years of communist rule in Eastern Europe, Orthodox Christians have suffered, been sent to labour camps, killed and tortured. The Orthodox Church has been built on the blood and sacrifices of the martyrs of every generation. They have held on to their faith over so many generations despite all of the hardship the political chaos and the social unrest. It may be the case that because the lives of so many Orthodox Christians has followed the way of the cross, that the Orthodox Church has managed to preserve the whole truth of the Christian faith. Those of us who live in the affluent West, in the diaspora, need to be careful because we are now free to practice our faith, but the comforts of our life and the influences or mindset around us may cause us to lose our orthodox way of life and our orthodox phronima. Often when we are idle and comfortable, we tend to intellectualize and water down our faith. We make various adjustments to make it suit our modern needs, and we become more susceptible to worldly temptations. So in the end, we become lukewarm or armchair Christians rather than the zealous and heroic Christians which we are called to be and which we hear about in today's epistle reading. To become heroic Orthodox Christians, we need to detach ourselves like Moses from the comforts of Egypt and identify ourselves with God's way. We need to follow Christ and his teachings no matter what it costs or what difficult situations we find ourselves in. We should allow ourselves to be guided by our Orthodox Church, especially during this Lenten period, and take up the heroic and courageous struggle against the sins, the weaknesses and passions which enslave us and tie us down to the world. In today's Gospel reading, we hear about Christ calling Philip to follow him and Philip calling Nathaniel to come to Christ. When Christ met Philip and Nathaniel, it was their moment of being visited by the grace of God. They responded and became followers of Christ. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. How would you describe to someone the grace of God in your life? The grace of God begins with an inner conviction of faith in God and that God is the meaning of life. 
Another experience of the grace of God is when we are moved to repent of our wrongdoings, our dark thoughts and our sinful actions. We want and desire to unburden ourselves of sin and passions with holy confession. And after confession, we experience a joy that we have never experienced before and we feel great relief. Often, during or after confession, we shed tears of repentance and this also is a gift of the grace of God. But the greatest gift of grace is the determination to change. We recognize sin for what it is and that it exists deep within us and that it has wounded us deeply, distorted our thoughts, our feelings and our actions. The grace given to us in holy confession leads to an ongoing struggle to regain our spiritual health. Willingness to be directed, not self-directed, also brings the grace of God in our life. This is the orthodox phronima of repentance, willingness to be directed by God through our spiritual father. It is like we are saying to God, Lord, what do you want me to do now? And we need to work with patience to produce the fruits of repentance. When we struggle in this way, then the grace of God comes to us all the more to strengthen us in this struggle of repentance. Every day we are called to show the courage of the martyrs and the ascetics and the saints in persevering and enduring in our struggle to overcome our old selves and in doing so we experience deeply the grace of God, the grace that brought Nathaniel to his knees and which moved him to cry out, Lord, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the Journey to Pascha podcast. Please be sure to subscribe on your preferred listening platform and check out the Greek Orthodox Christian Society YouTube channel, our website at lichnos.org, that's L-Y-C-H-N-O-S dot O-R-G, and our Orthodox Journey Facebook and Instagram sites, for even more Orthodox spiritual content.